Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. So today's the day that we're going to be overhauling the rear brakes. So we're going to be placing the calipers and the, the rotors and the pads and as well as we're going to be putting in that 7 8 master cylinder. So I'm just going to get changed and we're going to get right to it. Alright guys, so here's the bundle of parts. Here is the rotors, some brake fluid, um, the master cylinder, and the two um, calipers, as well as the brake pads. So that's basically all we're going to be using. Of course, we're going to need some sill glide, as well as some anti-seize compound, um, and brake cleaner, of course. So this is all the stuff that we're going to be using for doing the brake setup. Alright guys, so before you get started for the rear, always release your e-brake cable. So once it's all released, this should be okay. Um, you can leave the rear kind of attached because we're going to be adjusting that later. But we'll, we'll have to release this because we need to detach the cable. Alright, so while we're under here, so this is the driver's side rear. We're going to be basically removing all this stuff and then we're going to be changing over to the nice discs. All right guys, so first things first is remove the little caliper shield. So with the shield exposed, you wanna remove the e-brake now. So there's a pin right here, and you basically pull it out. So careful, you don't wanna break the pin. It comes out like that. This is what the pin looks like. And this should come out pretty easy. Um, if not, if yours is seized, um, you want to basically move this cable back and forth. Um, and that will keep twisting in. It'll break it free. Then get some um, locking pliers or something and just pull and twist, pull and twist, and it'll come out. Once this comes out, then you clean it up with a wire wheel and um, you're good for the pin. And then make sure you lube it up with some anti-seize later when you reinstall. All right, next we'll be removing the 14 millimeter bolts back here. I mean, for the most part, you're gonna be using a 3 8 wrench. And since you're gonna be replacing the caliper, you're gonna to need to dis disconnect these um, hoses. So there are 12 millimeter bolts holding these the, the hose brackets in. I've already kind of disconnected mine, so I left them since I didn't put them back from the last install. So they should be okay right now. So one of the steps is basically you need to remove the e-brake cable now, which is held on by two bolts, 12 bolt, 12 millimeter bolts on the top. So all you do is move the cable side to side and there's two bolts here that you need to remove. And that will disengage the cable bracket. They're not very tight and not supposed to be. You can gun them off if you had the caliper already taken off. Now you can hang this caliper. There you go, so it's hung up. Move that to the side. So now you want to service this stuff. So the bracket is also held on by two 12 mil, I mean 14 millimeter bolts. So you want to remove that. So pick, take out the brake pads first. So there is the bracket. Um, now we're going to be basically servicing this bracket. So we're going to move that to the side later to work on. Next, you're going to remove this. So if you have a impact driver, you might need to use this because these rotor retaining screws a lot of times are seized in there. But one of the tricks is just to hammer at the screw to break it a little bit loose and then try and twist it off with a screwdriver. Um, I've already kind of removed these before, so they're pretty easy to remove. There's the brake disc. Here's my new hubs. All right, so here's my new brake disc. Um, looks like they came fully painted. Um, better read the instructions. All right, so basically it says to clean the brake surfaces. I mean, I don't think there's grease on these since they are painted and all, but just to be sure, you wanna spray down the braking surfaces with some brake cleaner.
All right, so here we're going to service the caliper bracket. The new caliper came with new hardware, so we're gonna start by prying off the old hardware. Next, we're gonna use a wire brush and clean up some of the rusty bits. Then give it a spray with some brake cleaner and wipe it down. The new hardware clips right on. Now to remove the old pins and clean out the old grease. I just fill it up with brake cleaner and then just get in there with a paper towel. Now to lube up the new pins with some seal glide. Install the new boots. Put a little seal glide inside the boots. And pop the pins in. Now we just reinstall the caliper bracket. Now to lube up the corners of the brake pads with some anti-seize and install them. Now install the new caliper and torque down the bolts. Now we can disconnect the brake line from the old caliper and install it onto the new caliper. Make sure you replace those copper crush washers. Alright guys, so next we're going to be working on the master cylinder. Um, you want to first disconnect these, these plugs. Um, so they are black and black and green and red. So this is disconnected. Now you want to disconnect this hose here because um, you know it's kind of in the way. As you notice, I've already removed my strut bar because I won't be able to remove this without getting my strut bar out. Um, all right, now that is out. Now you can just disengage it from this bracket here. Nice and easy. This is just your brake booster line. So it just gives you a little bit more working room. There's two lines here. You're gonna need a, I believe it's called a flare nut wrench. But it is one of these kind of wrenches where it's open-ended. And these, this one is what you would use to loosen the brake lines. Otherwise you might strip them and you don't wanna, want that to happen. So what I'm gonna do is just, just kind of loosen them a little bit before I um, fully loosen it. So just a little bit, there you go, that's it's kind of broken loose. You don't want to break it fully loose yet because fluid's going to leak everywhere. There you go. Okay. Now I'm basically going to grab a towel and lay it under here because it's going to be leaking all over. So that stuff there. Let's get another towel and stuff it right under. Just for extra security measures. All right, now there's gonna be a, I believe that's a 12 millimeter bolt down there. Uh, I think my flare nut might work. Yeah, flare nut works on this too. So you can loosen these, that one. Another one down here. So that's basically ready to be taken out. We're gonna go and bleed our master cylinder first before we put before we kind of finish taking this off so we do a fast quick swap all right guys so here's the new master cylinder it looks really nice all right let's clamp down undo this cap all right so now what we want to do is we want to fill it up with some brake fluid and we're gonna get uh, I guess a screwdriver or something in here and we're going to push push it in to pump the piston so i'm just going to go and find something that'll fit in there first all right so this ratchet fits perfectly in there so i could easily pump it without damaging anything so i want to fill it up with some brake fluid make sure your tray is under because you're going to be getting brake fluid everywhere this is the method messy method because i don't have a master cylinder bleeder kit all right so some 
Great flip. And what you would do is you have to hold your fingers in here and wait until the fluid actually comes right out. So I gotta really hold this down. So the method here is that you would pump the piston with your fingers hovering over the brake line holes and then plug the holes with your fingers when you release the piston. Keep doing this until the fluid leaks out from both holes. All right, so that is pretty good. So both have fluid coming out of it. So what I'm gonna do is cap them off with those caps that came with it so we don't lose as much brake fluid while I remove the other one. Yeah, that's closed. All right, now we're gonna go back and remove the uh, master cylinder that's in the car. All right, so we're back here. Now we're gonna be removing the rest of this, right? So, um, so you can easily disconnect it like so. Take the lines out of the way. Give it a wiggle, wiggle, and it's out. So there is a rubber seal that's supposed to go on the master cylinder, and that is right here. This is supposed to come out, I think. Or is this supposed to go into the back? Yeah, this is supposed to come out. There you go. So this goes onto the master cylinder. Don't leave that back in here because the new one has one. All right, with these capped off, I'm just gonna pop this one right in there. There you go, wires are connected. And then this cap actually has a arrow that points which way to the front. So it looks like it sits like this with the wires hanging in the back. There you go. That's how it would sit, because it's pointing this way to the front. All right, let's get some brake clean in there. We'll wipe everything up. All right, guys, so I have uh, tightened down the uh, master cylinder down. These bolts that go onto the brake booster, those are supposed to be at 11 foot-pounds. Um, and I've tightened down the brake lines as well. They don't look like they're leaking or anything, so I think it's good. I've also sprayed down the whole area with some brake cleaner, so I think that's good. Now it's time to basically bleed the brakes. So in order to do that, I'm going to be having to take off the front of the, the front wheels. So I'm just going to be jacking it up and then I'll show you guys how to bleed the brakes. All right, guys. So to bleed the brakes, I'm doing it the one person method. So you could essentially buy a one person bleeder kit or you can make your own. This is just made with a Coke bottle, obviously hole drilled in the top for the hose, and then a clear hose. Um, you'll want to fill it up with some brake fluid, old, new, whatever. Um, essentially what happens is you don't want it to suck back up air when you're bleeding it. So I'll show you guys how to set this up. So that's basically all you need to bleed the brakes by yourself. Make sure that the hose is submerged and is in the fluid so that it's not going to be sucking up any air. Um, so we're going to just go and get this ready. Uh, we're going to work on basically the um, furthest side from the master cylinder first, which is the passenger uh, rear. So always work from the furthest to the closest. So then um, or we'll finish off on the driver's side essentially. So we're going to go ahead and just set this up on the passenger rear. All right guys, so here's the setup. Um, you basically have this hose up here. And you want this to be going upwards, right? So um, you plug this into here, make sure it's tight. Uh, if it's not tight, you need to tighten it. But essentially, you want this hose fun funneling, oh uh, crap, gotta spray those rotors down later. You want this hose basically going upwards. So I'm gonna go get a zip tie, because this hose is a little bit loose to Kind of close off this area so that it no there wouldn't be any leaks. All right, got the zip tie, and what you want is you want to put your wrench inside here too. So this is a 10 millimeter. So before we even do anything, let's try and release so that we know that it's loose. Okay, so we can loosen it. So tighten it back a little bit, and now we will zip tie it down. 
I used one of those zip ties that you can easily release. So I, all I have to do is just fold the tab and it will release. There we go. That's tight on there. It's not going anywhere. So now, basically, we're starting from here. Um, and we're going to release the valve. And we're going to start pumping. So you don't need to go all all too loose. This thing is just like that. It's good enough. Now I'm going to go and start pumping and you will see that the air will start getting bled out of there. So what you want to make sure is basically all the bubbles are bled out of this line. You can see it by looking at the line to see if there's any air bubbles in there. So I think all the bubbles have bled out of it. Um, so I'm just gonna be tightening this up now. And then lastly, you'll just want to top it up to your max and that's it. Basically all your brakes are bled and you're good to go. Check for any leaks, obviously. Over here, I don't see any leaks. That's fine. We're bleeding the system. Check for leaks all around and that's basically it. All right, guys. So the final step is basically to adjust your e-brake. First step is basically to release your e-brake all the way and loosen up this rear adjusting nut all the way until there's no pull on the cables. I've already done the adjustment, so I'm just gonna go over the steps with you guys. Next, you wanna fire up the car, and then you start pushing on your brake pedal. You wanna push this about 40 to 50 times with the car fired up. This is what this would reset the rear calipers uh, and you know repressurize them and stuff so that you could start adjusting the e-brake. Next, you're gonna to wanna to pull this e-brake up one click and start tightening up the adjusting nut. This once it gets to the point where there's drag on the rear wheels when you spin it by hand, um, and also when you release it, there's no drag, that's when it's almost good. This should lock up the rear brakes within six to 10 clicks. So if it doesn't do that, you're gonna have to keep adjusting it, but at you know re fully released, there shouldn't be any drag. So it takes a little bit of fine tuning. But once you've done that and it's adjusted and within six to 10 clicks, the rear wheels cannot be moved by your hand or anything. You can push it real hard and nothing happens. You're good. They're, uh, it's adjusted. Anyways, guys, that's basically the rear brakes. We've done ho the whole overhaul. We've also replaced the master cylinder and we've also adjusted the e-brake. So that's basically it for this video. If you haven't already, please comment, like, and subscribe and share my videos. As always, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. I'll be